where the Midland Highway meets the Macquarie River, stands the one-time Mystery Bridge of Ross. For 122 years, the amazing carvings on this bridge have intrigued travellers with their beauty and craftsmanship. But who was the sculptor? No one seemed to know. Was he a convict, forced to toil and then forgotten, or was he a roaming artist who did his work and moved along his way? Three years ago, Tasmanian artist-writer Leslie Greener began a long search of the archives and convict records to find the unknown sculptor, who, in his opinion, must have been one of the most gifted artists ever to reach these shores. Last year, Greener unearthed the story of Daniel Herbert Highwayman, transported for life, who won back his freedom through his work on the bridge, which he hoped to build as well as to decorate. Leslie Greener was awarded a Commonwealth Literary Fund scholarship and went to Ross to write the story of Daniel Herbert and of the carvings which at last have brought him fame. Today, the traffic still speeds across Ross Bridge, a noble monument to the genius of the highwayman transported for life, whose story has a happy ending. He married the girl of his choice and settled down at Ross, a respected free citizen of the colony. Overlooking the South Esk River at Hadspen stands Entally, the 140-year-old home of the Honourable Thomas Reby, the cleric who became a leading racehorse breeder and Premier of Tasmania. Entally has been restored to its original state and now attracts 20,000 tourists every year. The visitor is soon absorbed in the atmosphere of early colonial living and has the opportunity to study the best collection of period furniture in Tasmania. In the music room, the old piano still plays and the miniature piano intrigues visitors. The walnut cupboard in the drawing room dates from the time of Queen Anne. Its secret compartments were used to hide money, not poison, as some have said. The room has a decided French atmosphere, although most of the pieces, including the writing desk and gilt clock, were made in 18th century England at a time when French influence was strongly felt. The vestibule houses the oldest piece, an early 17th century oak cupboard. An early washing machine is found on the first floor, where the small girls of the Reby family used to play with dolls' houses, similar to these Georgian and Victorian examples. Out in the courtyard, the coaches are housed. Their Victorian graces intrigued many a pretty girl. Guests admire the quiet chapel where the Reebys held their private services. While Thomas Reeby looks down from his portrait on the wall and remembers the horses he loved so well. At Taruna, four miles from Hobart, John Pallotta has opened to the public his detailed model of a Tudor village. Buildings such as the Three Bells Inn at Buckinghamshire are all perfect scale models of originals in English villages. John Pallotta came from Romney Marsh in England, where at the age of nine he was stricken with polio and crippled for life. Work on his models is difficult for John, but with infinite patience, he'll split a matchstick into 30 pieces so that a window or chimney pot will be exactly right. Years of painstaking work have gone into the display, and its realistic detail draws hundreds of sightseers each week. Before John starts on a model, he plans the building from photographs, usually supplied by the mayor of the village concerned. The village is complete to street lighting and country scenes, such as his farmhouse and gypsy camp. It is fine modelling by a courageous man who has persevered to defeat overwhelming handicaps. But John hasn't finished yet. His next project, Port Arthur Penal Colony.
hostess, Mrs. Nell Cady, of the Van Diemen Folk Museum, welcomes visitors to Narina, the 124-year-old homestead at Battery Point, Hobart's oldest suburb. Narina was reopened in November 1957 to house relics of early Tasmania and of the lives of the colonists. Women find interest in the fashions of the 1840s, particularly the debutante frock on the right. An old colonial oven warms the cosy downstairs tea room. The ship room brings back many memories for Captain Harry O'May, one of the trustees of the museum and a noted author on shipping topics. Captain O'May likes to show visitors relics such as the figurehead from the Barkentine Zephyr, wrecked off Mariah Island in 1913. He is one of Hobart's pioneer seamen and can tell many tales of the days when whales and seals were hunted a few hundred yards from Narina. The museum has a complete display of the wheelwright's craft. The wheels and the barrels are exact replicas of those made a century ago. The flintlock guns are those used by early settlers in the colony, and above them is the clock that set the time for Hobart in the old days of the one o'clock gun. Vivid memories of the old days of free settler and convict and of the many ships wrecked off Tasmanian coasts are preserved here in this newest Tasmanian museum at Narina.